This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman, and news on the environment and climate change scientists are expressing dismay over unprecedented warm temperatures in the Arctic. In recent days, temperatures at the North Pole have surged above freezing, even though the sun set last October and won't rise again until later this month. On the northern tip of Greenland, a meteorological site has logged an unprecedented 61 hours of temperatures above freezing so far in 2018. The record-breaking temperatures are connected to an unusual retreat of sea ice in the sunless Arctic winter. Scientists suggest warming temperatures are eroding the polar vortex, the powerful winds that once cushioned the frozen north. The alarming heat wave is causing scientists to reconsider even their bleakest forecasts of climate change. According to a leaked draft of a scientific report by a United Nations panel of scientists, quote, the risk of an ice-free Arctic in summer is about 50 percent or higher, with warming of between 1.5 and 2.0 degrees. For more, we go to Copenhagen, Denmark, where we're joined by Jason Box. He's a professor in glaciology at the Geologic Survey of Denmark and Greenland. Jason Box, it's great to have you on Democracy Now! Can you explain what is taking place? There's actually a lot going on in this story. And I think it's worth zooming out to the increase in the amount of heat-trapping gases in our atmosphere, the, the greenhouse effect, has been enhanced by human, act, human burning of fossil fuels. That's elevated atmospheric CO2 almost 50 percent now. OK, so that's heating the, the planet. And it's the Arctic that is warming at twice the rate of areas to the south as a consequence of this. And there are feedbacks that uh, allow the heat to stay in the Arctic. And when the sea ice, which has lost half of its thickness in the last 50 years, um, it moves away from the shore, we have uh, an ocean surface that is about 30 degrees Celsius warmer than, it, than the surface would otherwise be of the ice. That releases heat into the atmosphere. And there's something called the, the lapse rate feedback, which allows that heat to to, uh, get trapped near the surface in the atmosphere, it allows it to warm up further. So there's an interaction between the loss of Arctic sea ice that's been retreating. It's now uh, at record low. It's about the area of Alaska below its average. Um, the interaction of that heat release with warming in the lower atmosphere that reinforces the slowdown of the jet stream, the polar vortex. They're the same thing. And what's normal is the jet stream polar vortex to have a circular shape around the Arctic. And, but the warmer it gets, the Arctic, the more wavy that structure becomes, and the jet stream uh, starts to meander more. And those meanders, they get locked in. This is a signature of climate change, a more uh, persistent wave pattern which is now driving extra heat into the Arctic that wasn't possible before and allowing more heat out. Right now in Copenhagen, it's been very cold the last week at the same time it's been so uh, warm in the Arctic. Now, if we just look back to the earlier this winter when it was so cold in the eastern U.S., it was record warm in Alaska. This is the same type of phenomenon where you have heat being driven up to high latitudes and cold coming down, and it's persistent, and it sticks for days, weeks, even months. This is a signature of Arctic climate change, the loss of Arctic sea ice, the, the again, more heat exchange uh, into the atmosphere in the Arctic winter. And something similar happens in summer, where we lose the, the reflective cover of sea ice. Then the 24 hours of sunlight is absorbed in the ocean, heating it up. And all of this is reinforcing this slowdown and lazy uh, patterns of the jet stream. I wanted to ask you, Jason, I know there's a delay between us, so I'm going to ask two questions, and you can answer them both as we speak to you in Copenhagen, about other impacts of climate change. Right now in Nigeria, leaders from across Africa are gathering to discuss the escalating hunger crisis of 17 million people who depend on Lake Chad, which is shrinking due to climate change. And finally, I wanted to ask you about the impact of President Trump and his climate denialism on global efforts to tackle climate change. Sure. 
Like the loss of Arctic sea ice, this is something that isn't really that big of a surprise. Um, the warming of the continents and the drying of the continents is a long-expected pattern of climate change. Uh, the North American continent is getting drier. The desert belts are moving north. On the, Alas on the African continent, we have a drying effect that's been ongoing for, for uh, decades. Now, we start to see more and more of the impacts on also combined with with non-sustainable farming practices, we can have patterns of desertification, where um, drought is compounded, um, the loss of uh, land fertility um, is is driving a reinforcing uh, impact on, on people, um, where they're losing their food and water security and coming more into conflict with each other, uh, uh, conflict over dwindling resources. Uh, so. Unfortunately, the the well, this drives um, in uh, more migration, uh, climate refugees. This is another signature of climate change. We should expect this to get worse, not better, and and um, it's something that that we've seen coming, and it's 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 happening. Um, with regard to um, the U.S. Uh, claiming that they would pull out of the Paris Agreement. I remember when that news came in uh, over a year ago and um, how I think it actually uh, gave more resolve to people who have a job to do, and that's to make a transition to a more sustainable economy. It's like uh, those of us outside of the U.S. are like, OK, well, we have more work to do. Uh, will we get there? Uh, will we meet the Paris Agreement? That's a um, big question. Jason Box, I want to thank you for being with us, professor of glaciology at the Geologic Survey of Denmark and Greenland, speaking to us from Copenhagen. That does it for our show. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.